Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer Combat Cards, Ranked Mode. For this match, I'm going to be playing as Orcs, who are nearly at 2800 trophies in Ranked, and we are running Gazgul Thraka, who I have at level 5. Definitely one of the most beastly cards in the game, especially once you get his melee attack increased through his special rule. And we're running some beastly bodyguards as well. We got the Mecha Dread, very powerful but also very expensive bodyguard with shields. And then the legendary Defkila Wartrike which also has good stats, and it has Scout, now making it combo very well with Boss's Axe Truck, but we'll see how it works out with Gaz. And then for support, we've got the Pain Boy, who can provide some good healing. It works well with bodyguards with high health, such as the Mecha Dread. And then Hack a Buzzkill, this guy has Taunt, who will be good for protecting uh, the stronger units. And then finally, we've got Makari, who I haven't used much before, uh, he has Inspiring Presence, so he can increase the attack power of your units. He debuffs ranged and has a lot of health. So, we'll see how this mishmash of orcs works out in the ranked scene. Let's go ahead and deploy and see which faction we are up against. Alright, so here is our opponent. And it's going to be one of the toughest ones to defeat, I think. Cannon S. Viridian at level 7. That's a very high level uh, warlord there. Not looking forward to this match. They're at 27 27 trophies with this deck. So I think we could try just avoiding uh, killing their weaker guys at the beginning. See how that works out. If we can try to focus down their stronger units first. Uh, I think that could work out, but knowing the AI, they like to deploy all of their weaker units uh, towards the beginning of the battle, so yep, and sure enough, there it is. So, well, at least they're not going to be dealing very much damage uh, with the counterattack whenever they get uh, the Spirit of the Martyr. And we can deal a whole lot of damage with the melee, so that's what we're going to do. 222 total damage. Of course, getting reduced a bit by the taunt there. But able to kill the Crusader in the second hit. And here is uh, that guy getting the uh, attack. The Tempestus Scion, he redeploys because of his uh, trait, Endless. And then, uh, once again, gets the extra attack there. Only dealing 4 damage with the counterattack. So that was a very poor use of the special rule. Now recently I did uh, use a Cannon S deck with these Endless guys in it. And it I was lucky, so it actually worked out pretty well. But uh, definitely not the ideal way to use Cannon S here. And they went for the ranged attack. We got actually had a very good ranged attack to counter with because of uh, these guys. Now that's part of the reason that I like them is that they are able to go both melee and ranged and deal lots of damage either way. So take down another healer there, let's see, and it is the unfortunately uh, that uh, the Scion actually took out one of the shields on the Mega Dread with the counterattack there, so that actually was a pretty good use of this special rule. Has one shield remaining, and they're gonna start deploying their melee units here, and this is where it's gonna, the struggle is gonna start for sure, especially uh, if we can't get uh, well, especially once we start destroying their weaker units. Alright, they actually had a pretty strong ranged attack there. Celestine on the field. I'm not sure what her ranged weapon is. But she has a surprisingly strong ranged attack, as you can see. Lots of health as well. Uh, so we're going to be taking a lot of damage either way. And unfortunately, there's no way to avoid the shield getting broken on the Mega Dread because of the death glow on uh, that sister over there. So we are going to go... I think, well, we're going to go with the the ranged attack for now, I think. And hopefully Celestine does not get the extra attack here. We're about to find out. Death glow going off there, breaking the shield, and it is Celestine that gets the attack. 50 damage there. Very painful. And the ranged counterattack as well. So that... Wartrike, I'm afraid, is going to go down. Unfortunately, Buzzkill did not do a very good job of protecting those guys. And that was partially my fault because I deployed them across from the weakest unit. So now they have 
Uh, well, they destroy the Wardrag and 77 damage from the ranged weapons on that Warglaive, which is has big game hunter. Very powerful at level 8, especially uh, with its damage getting increased. Now, I think we're just going to put down Gazkothrak and hope that uh, he doesn't get obliterated by the uh, counterattacks. Now, it is going to be very difficult for Gaz to take down the Warlord. Uh, we're going to put down the Pain Boy over here. So at least we can heal, heal up our Warlord a bit. 54 health. It's not bad. Fierce Charge going off there. And let's go... I don't think it... I mean, it doesn't really make much difference, honestly. We're not going to be able to kill the Warg Wave, I don't think. Let's just go with the ranged attack. I will debuff their ranged, and please uh, do not hit Gaz with Celestine is my hope, but there's a 1 in 3 chance. We'll see what happens. Okay, the weakest guy got it. Okay, that, that worked out well. Alright, looking good so far. Warglaive got the extra attack that time, dealing 51 damage. Here come the ranged counterattacks, and now the final bodyguard. Oh no, this is not going to be good. It's probably going to be the Penta engine. And across from Gaz, that is looking real bad, actually. Very big attack here. 145 damage to the Warlord. And what's going to get the extra... Actually, either way, they're going to be hitting Gaz. Another 72 damage. That was terrible. That was a very bad turn right there. Very bad turn of events. Now uh, we're going to put down Makari over here. But I don't think there's really any way that we can win here. Because uh, Cannoness at this level... I mean, she has three shields, I believe. Yeah, there is, there's just no way. She doesn't deal a huge amount of damage, but... Uh, this is just not going to happen. So, I don't know if I had... The thing is, my War Trike got killed a little bit too early, before it had a chance to get healed. So, that was one of my main damage dealers that went down. And... Yeah, so deploying Gaz early... I don't know if I, if saving him for later would have really done anything. Still two more shields left. I don't know, if they continue going ranged. But yeah, he only has 38. Points, so... He was capable of dealing 354 damage here. It's going to get entirely blocked by the shield, but we're just going to do it just for fun. Megadred also actually has enough damage to take down the Warblade. Cannoness Viridian getting the counterattack and dealing the final blow to Gaskolthraka. Unfortunately, a defeat, but that's not surprising. I mean, even against the AI, it can be very difficult to deal with the Cannoness once they start deploying all those strong melee units towards the end of the battle. So, uh, this build uh, is just for fun. It's not really that uh, a serious uh, competitive deck, but uh, it's capable of dealing with with a lot of things, but Cannoness Viridian is probably one of the most difficult ones to defeat, uh, mainly because of the shields on the Warlord. So I guess, uh, for the same reason, Captain Acheron would probably also be pretty difficult to defeat with this. So, anyway, let me know uh, if you'd like to see anything more along these lines, some sort of non-traditional uh, decks that I'm using. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.